Hiya, I'm Hayley from Creative Photo Folk and today we're going to be making twirls with Photoshop. Now making twirls is a fun meditative process that is pretty quick to create with surprising psychedelic results that you can't possibly anticipate. So these can be turned into artworks or used creatively in composites and I'll show you some examples as we go through the video. Now first of all let's talk about what kind of image works best for twirling. So to give you an example this is the image we'll be working with today but this is what it looks like when completed. So you may notice that it's helpful to have lots of colors. Quite a lot of detail is good too so this image has both. And really the best way to approach this is to think about what colors you want your final result to have. Are you in the mood for something orange or something green? And really go along with that. Now personally I like results that are a bit more symmetrical. So to give you an example here's one created in a landscape format and I just feel the symmetry isn't working for me in this image but if I first crop it into a square and try again then I get something like this and I like that much better. That's just personal taste. So anyway we'll hop back to the image we'll be working with today and then at the end I'll show you a few more examples and variations. Now first of all I like to make a copy of my background layer so that I've got it for easy reference to see what image I use to create the twirl because they do become unrecognizable in the process. So to do that I'm going to press Control or Command J and you'll see that a copy layer has popped up over here on the right. Then we're going to right click that layer and convert it to a smart object. So a smart object just means that any changes we make to it will be um, editable later on. Now to start this process we first need to rough up the image a little which gives it some more detail. We're going to do this by going to filter, pixelate and then mezzotint. Now this adds some randomly generated patterns to the image based on the setting you choose down here. For now we're going to choose long strokes but you can experiment with this more later and then hit OK. Now we need to blur the image so it becomes unrecognizable and we're going to do this three times to get the preferred amount of blur. So we're going to go to filter, blur and then radial blur. In here we want the amount to be maximum so at 100. We want to choose zoom because we want it coming out like starburst kind of thing. And we're going to choose draft because this is just our first draft. It doesn't have to be best quality just yet. And then we'll hit OK. So that's our first set of blur, but we are going to repeat this process two more times. So we'll go again to filter, blur, and radial blur. We'll keep these settings exactly the same and we will hit OK. And then for our final blur, we will do something a little bit different. We'll go to filter, blur, radial blur. Now for this last pass, we're going to choose best and hit OK. This will take a little bit longer because it is rendering at a higher quality. Now to create the twirl, we're going to go to filter, distort, and then twirl. We are going to choose 216, that is the amount I used in the original image and I quite like it. However, if you're not sure, just start with around 120 and hit OK. So that is our initial twirl, which in itself is quite mesmerizing, but it's not quite the effect we're after. So what we're going to do now is duplicate this layer with all the filters it has applied. So we're going to do that with Control or Command J. And you'll see we now have a copy. What we're going to do is double click the word twirl on the top copy and you can set this to anything you like and this is where this technique gets quite experimental. However, for the sake of ease, what I'm going to do is move it into the opposite position of what we had before. So we had 216 before, now I'm going to make it negative 216. So it's basically just spinning it the same amount but in the opposite direction. And that will give us a little bit of symmetry. So for that, I will hit OK. Now for the fun part, we're going to change the blend mode so this twirl combines with the twirl we created earlier. So your blend modes are found here under the word normal and this will just be a bit of fun to choose which one you like and depending on whatever colors and patterns you've got in your original, you could end up choosing a very different one from what I will choose today. 
So cycling through, you'll see the different results. Some are too dark and muddy like this one. Some are too bright. Some are too gross. I think for this one, I'll go with lighten. And you tend to get the best results with either darken, lighten, or pin light. Now you have a chance to experiment. So I really like this result here and we'll be playing with it a little more, but you can actually just start experimenting with your mezzotint in particular. So we can double click the one on the top layer. You will get an error message um, that smart filters stacked on top of this filter will not preview. Just hit OK, don't worry about that. And we could change it to something like coarse dots, hit OK. And you'll see what that did. It just makes it a little bit more detailed. I don't particularly like that. I'm going to step back in my history to the previous step. You could also actually just switch off some of your radial blurs to see if that makes a difference. So let's look at the before and after. I don't actually mind that. It's made it a little bit more um, kind of punchier. We could try another one. And again, yeah, I, it's starting to get a little bit busy, but it's something I might like to work with. Um, so we'll keep that one. The other thing you could now experiment with is going back into 12 by double clicking it. And you could play with the intensity and direction. So we might go for something quite extreme just as an example and hit OK. And I hate it, but you can see what it did. So I'll just undo that with Control Command Z. Now, I don't mind this, but like I said earlier, I'm a real fan of symmetry and the fact that it's a little offset to the left is kind of messing with my head. So I'm going to take it one step further to get that symmetry that I enjoy. And to do that, I'm going to make a stamp visible layer of everything that we can already see. So every layer we have already used, I'm going to stamp visible it into one layer. Now we do that with Shift, Control, Alt, E, or on a Mac, Shift, Command, Option E, and you'll see that that has now made a layer that is entirely made up of everything we've already done. And then we're going to go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Horizontal down the bottom here. So that takes everything and flips it horizontally. Now, once again, we're going to play with our blend modes under normal, and you will start to see that lovely symmetry that I enjoy and find something that looks pretty good. And I think either lighter color or lighten, which are pretty much the same, is the effect I'm going for. So that's not too bad, but I do like to experiment a little bit more. And what I did is activated my move tool with the shortcut V, or it's this very top one at the toolbar. And I held down shift as I press my cursor to move this around because shift keeps it proportionally on the same line. So I just move things around until I find, found some shapes that I liked. And I tended to like this kind of little lotus pattern that's going on at the top here. So maybe something like that. And then I could crop it down with C, the shortcut C, and making sure that I've got WH resolution chosen. Otherwise, it will try to um, crop to it a specific dimension, whereas this is a more of a freehand one. And I would just crop out those edges and hit my plus. And that would be my finished result. And I really like that. But just to finish up, there's a couple of extra things you could do. So first of all, I'm going to add an adjustment layout from my little um, half pie down the bottom. And I might choose something like levels. And I'll see if I can add maybe a bit more contrast. Make it a bit brighter, but not too bright. I don't want my highlights blowing out. Maybe around there. I could also play with my hue saturation just to make it punchier Ooh, or change the colors, which yuck, but you could something like that. But again, you don't want to go overboard. So I probably won't do very much of either of those things. But these are all the things you can play with. Now, this is a fun one to experiment with on lots of images. So to be able to do that without going through that process we just did, what you could do is record yourself an action. So in my actions panel, I could hit this little plus down the bottom, name my action. So I'll just put test, hit, oh, hit record, and then just do that whole process that I've shown you. When you're finished, you would press stop. And then once you had your base image, I've actually created one earlier. So let's just delete everything we've done and I'll show you how it looks. So all of that's now gone. We will hit play. And you will receive this for free if you are a Photo Fanatics member. 
However, it's not that difficult to create yourself. We just, just follow the process that we've just been through. I will just fast forward this section so you don't have to sit through it. And you'll see it gets you right to the point where you want to start playing with your blend modes on that top layer. So then you could pick lighten as we did before. The other thing is you would want to go in and play with your twirl settings and your mezzo tint if you prefer, but pretty much the twirl will get you where you want to go. And that saves you a few steps of work. So let's shut that down and I'll just walk you through some different examples I've created. All right, so we'll start with this one. I'll just show you what the original image looked like. It was this crazy store. Um, God, I can't even remember what country, maybe Malaysia. And I just really loved all the bright uh, white and the neon pinks. And so this is the result we ended up with. Then I did that same thing we just did by um, duplicating one side and then flipping it to give you this shape. So that is that one. But then I actually thought, well, I'm going to try this as a square. So I, I cropped our initial image to a square before we worked with it. So let me show you how to crop it down to a square, which I'm sure you were probably thinking, I already know how to do that. But there is an extra step that's really important. So if we go to our crop tool with the, with the shortcut C, this one here, and we will actually choose square for this one because that's the shape we want it. Now, before I press plus or enter to lock that in, what I want to do is make sure that delete cropped pixels is chosen. If we don't do that, it will still keep these sides and it will still twirl those sides. So it's really important that you make sure that those sides are gone forever. Now, once we do that, however, I like to keep delete cropped pixels in. I like to keep my edges in case I need them back. So I usually immediately go and switch that back off so I don't accidentally use it later on. But this is going to take ages, so I'm just going to cancel out of that. Now, another example I want to show you is this one. It's I. It's not the most thrilling twirl, to be honest, but it started out looking like this. It was a um, bunch of pumpkins on a table, and that was the end result. But then I did something and got this result with the same image, and I like it much better. So to do that, what I did is this. So with that original image, what I did is brought up my crop tool. I made sure that it was WH resolution so I could crop it how I liked. And what I did is dragged it quite far out and quite high up. Then I duplicated this image with Control Command J, went to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal, and then use my Move tool to move it over so they aligned, which sort of slightly out. There we go. Then I highlighted both these layers by Control or Command clicking the other one and pressing Control or Command J to duplicate them. I move these up and then I highlighted the bottom two and went to Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical. And then I just move those top two layers down because there's a little seam there with my arrow keys on my keyboard and cropped that back in, making sure I delete my cropped pixels. And then I did my twirl process. And so that's how we ended up with this result. Now with this example, which I really love, it started out looking like this. It was just some weird textures I also found on a wall in Malaysia. So I did my first twirl, my second twirl, but the blend mode I used is different. And difference is quite an interesting one because it kind of inverts your colors. Then I used a levels to make that brighter. I removed this little light flare here and then I thought I kind of like this but I actually would prefer it squished like this. So what I did is went to Control or Command T which is my transform tool and then holding our shift so I could change the proportion I just cropped it into a bit of a square shape and so that's how I ended up with this result that I really really like. And lastly, if you want to get really creative with this technique, you can start to use them in composites. So I created a twirl, but I stopped at that first step. I didn't make my second twirl and then use a blend mode to twirl it in. Then I brought in the original image that looked like this. I went to select sky. I popped that onto its own layer with control or command J. So it was just the sky. Then I duplicated this into a new document. So to do that, I went to I went to the layer over here, which is just this guy, went to duplicate layer, put it into a new document, and then hit OK, and that opens it up here by itself. I cropped away the bits that were blank. Then I just repeated half that twirl process. When that was done, 
I brought that back over into this document and then just added a layer mask to my main layer and inverted it so I could drop that sky out. And then I just dragged my twirl underneath so it became my new sky. So that's a little advanced, but if you're comfortable in Photoshop, that will make sense. And so that's how you create these kinds of composites. So really fun, really versatile. And can you think of any other creative ways that you could use this effect? Could you use it as a texture over another image or something like that? So have fun experimenting with this one. Be sure to share your results over on our Creative Photo Folk Facebook page. I can't wait to see them. And if you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe or give us a thumbs up. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Happy creating.